Hello and welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I am your host, Rick Becker. Tonight we've got a great show for you, a lot of stuff going on in the country, and um, I also have a guest, a uh, young Republican who is active and successful. His name is Justice Amundsen. We're going to be talking with him for segments two and three. We've got, a, I think, a fascinating executive order from Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Uh, that goes into uh, a lot of detail. I mean, this executive order is beautiful at contrasting the difference between the administration that we have now versus the previous administration. So uh, stick around, it's going to be a good show. So first up, I want to talk to you about the colonial pipeline, the hacking. Now, uh, it's been in the news a lot. You might have been hearing smatterings here and there. Uh, you might have heard a lot about it. Um, but I want to kind of go into that a little bit. There have been some updates. And um, let's first just hit the generalities of it. First graphic, uh, the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, it says, uh, why is there a gas shortage? And may, have, may you, many of you have been hearing there is a gas shortage. And it is because there is a pipeline, kind of like we have the uh, DAPL pipeline and the um, Keystone pipeline, things. There are pipelines all throughout the US. And the, the uh, Colonial Pipeline uh, really serviced the southeast part of the United States. It was hacked into and um, caused it to shut down. And it, this pipeline provided a significant amount of the gas and petroleum products to the southeast United States. Uh, let's bring up a map so you get a, a, an idea here. This is the pipeline itself. You see how it extends from Houston to New York. It runs 5,500 uh, miles, and uh, it is considered the key fuel artery in that area. The um, next graphic will show you. This is what has happened to the states. This is as of yesterday. The, the percent of uh, areas that are out of gas, just completely out of gas. You're looking all the way up into New Jersey. They have a, they're hit a tiny bit. And you get down into Florida, 16% of the stations have no gas. But look at that central portion, Virginia, 52%. North Carolina, 69% of gas stations have no gas. This is as of yesterday. South Carolina, 48%. Georgia, 46%. So those few states, I mean, they are hit. Uh, there are lines. And unfortunately, this has led to panic buying. People are in line, and, and I don't know if you've seen them. I've seen pictures where people have come with, with SUVs with 10, 12, 15 uh, of those five-gallon gas cans. And uh, I even saw a lady filling, uh, this is, I think it's real, but it's a picture of a lady filling, filling a, uh, a, a tub, you know, like just that you start clothes in or something, you know, just a big gray tub. Uh, so it's panic buying, which is unfortunate. It's kind of like the, the toilet paper thing all over where people hoard and get far more than they need to get. Um, but it's understandable. You need gas to get around, and there is a, a shutdown. Now, the nice thing is that Colonial Pipeline has uh, gotten back up and running. It's not 100% it's not by any means. Uh, it'll take a few more days to have everything run smoothly, but they are back up and back online. This is you know, there, uh, people that were hoarding were being criticized uh, significantly because the gas shortage was no different than a basic hurricane. But a hur even a hurricane has significant um, devastation afterward where it takes forever to get back up. This is basically just a, a software um, turning of the valve. It turns off. And they know that the valve's going to open back up. And when it does, everything will be normal again. So there's really not much of a necessity to be hoarding. There are a few other things that play into this that deal with government intervention. Uh, one of the things is that there is difficulty when the pipeline is shut down, we have to rely on trucking. And that's why the more northern states weren't having as much of a problem as, say, North Carolina uh, and South Carolina. Um, the, the, uh, the, the truckers would then be, be moving the gas. The problem is there's a shortage of truckers. Part of that. Not certainly not the only reason, but part of the reason is because of all of this unemployment stuff we were talking about the other night. Federal government is paying people to not work. Well, that translates into increasing increasing the shortage of truckers and therefore a, a slowing down uh, of the alleviation of the gas shortage by way of another route. 
Uh, there's another aspect here that I think uh, is interesting. One of the things in place for regulations is a cap on what energy companies can charge for various energy. And so there's a very, it's a very limited profitability that they can make. Now certainly they make lots of profit, but the thing is they're capped. And so one of the things that they would spend on with increased revenues is the very expensive, but apparently very necessary cybersecurity protections. So it's interesting when government gets involved and they say, hey, we don't want you to make too much of a profit. Well, then perhaps the companies um, have to figure out what, what things can't they do. And I guess they've been figuring that they cannot do the necessary cybersecurity upgrades. Another factor I wanted to bring up, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a thing about um, um, charging too much at the, at the pump and um, gouging, price gouging. I knew it would come to me eventually, but the price gouging, you know, everyone hates the idea of price gouging and governments and President Biden in, in particular is saying no price gouging. See, what's interesting is when you understand the economy, price gouging, if you want to call it that, is, is an important thing. And we, see, the thing is when there's a significant scarcity, if you increase your prices above what they normally would be, it staves people off from hoarding more than what they actually need. When everything is regularly priced and they think there's going to be a shortage, of course they get too much of it, far more than they need. They'll just use it down the road the next people in line that really need it, it's no longer there. You charge more, what they call price gouging, charge double, charge triple. Those first however many people in line are going to get only what they truly need to get through this um, problem, which leaves more than for the people that are behind them that also need to get through. So government getting involved uh, with uh, and, and making it so that prices can't be increased is silly and ill-advised and again it's a it's a policy and decision based um, politically and not economically um, so that a lot of things play in there now there were a couple of components uh, to the to the to this hacking right there were there were two parts one was a ransomware so what they did is they say say we're shutting off the, the, the spigot uh, you can't go if you want it opened up again you have to pay us uh, the other part was that they stole the data and so they would be able to use the data, all of the data for this company. Now, they were able to mitigate the problems with the data because the data was then stored on a New York server uh, and they were able to work with other agencies to then um, shut down the server that the data was stored on in New York. The idea was that it would be stored in New York and then eventually sent over to Russia because the uh, group that hacked uh, into this is a Russian group. And uh, but so they were able to, to to hold off on that. So that was the data. The other component is the ransomware. So hey, we want to get the spigot uh, up and running. Um, I was just listening. I was on a uh, Zoom call um, just about an hour ago with Larry Kudlow. Um, you guys probably know him. Uh, he was a big personality, financial personality on Fox News, and uh, was also the director of National Economic Council for President Trump. So he was on, and he had some very interesting things to say about a lot of stuff, but one of it, one of the things is he, he, advised, he, he explained that the initial ransom was $100 million, and then it got negotiated down to $40 million, and then finally $5 million, and the company actually paid the terrorists the $5 million, it's, it may have been four, four or five million dollars in Bitcoin. They, they paid him in Bitcoin. Another facet of that is that uh, the general understanding is that the government doesn't want companies to uh, negotiate with terrorists. And so there may be an issue here with Colonial Pipeline having paid the ransom of about $5 million. We'll see what uh, President Biden has to say about that. Here's the other thing that uh, Larry, was, Larry has been saying. I, th I find it fascinating. He believes that the Colonial Pipeline hacking by Russians uh, is involved or is, is related to the Hamas-Israel shooting, uh, the, the war that they have, the shooting war that's going on right now. Now you might say, how in the world are those related? The, uh, he believes that each of these things are sort of um, uh, caused by Russia. Russia uh, finances Iran, Iran finance, finances Hamas. The, the idea is that Russia is testing Biden and he's failing. 
He's just floundering and he's taking the punches. He's showing no strength. Uh, completely different than what would have uh, been occurring if Trump was still in office. So there you have it, Colonial Pipeline, my take. We're going to be coming back with Justice Amundsen next up. Stick with us. We'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Hero's with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. Back the house in honor of North Dakota's heroes with Bucks football Saturday, May 15th, as the Bucks go to battle against the Green Bay Blizzard. Help us honor Gold Star families, wounded warriors, and veterans alike. All veterans and family general admission tickets are free with military ID. Call 701-595-0771. For tickets and more information. All right, we're back. It's no apologies on Beck, and I am with Justice Amundsen. Justice, I've known you for a long time. Uh, Justice is uh, a young Republican and uh, activist and a uh, lover of liberty. And I've seen you around uh, here and there at the various events that go on. And you've always been well-spoken, um, certainly uh, knowledgeable and insightful for a young person. And um, it, last night I had Josh Gellion on, and he suggested I give you a little ringy dingy and see if you want to come on the show and talk about things. And especially, I thought that was a great idea in light of the fact that you just became chair of District 30, correct? Yes, I did. So, interesting, interesting stuff. So, uh, let our viewers know a little bit of, about who you are and kind of uh, how you got involved in politics and what the story has been leading up to the most recent events. Sure. Yeah, I got involved in around 2015. I just had a passion for conservative politics, started volunteering with the DGOP, knocking mm -hmm. doors, making phone calls, stuff of that nature. In 2016, I went to the University of Mary and got heavily involved in college activism. So I started a Young Americans for Liberty chapter, and I was the founder and president of that. And then I went on to found uh, Marauders on Politics, which is sort of a nonpartisan organization where people just get together and discuss political ideals. And then later on after that, I went on to join the You Marry Collegians for Life, which is a pro-life group. Okay. 
Then following that in 2018, I actually was offered a job in the Kevin Kramer campaign. So I was making uh, phone calls, knocking doors, traveling around the state, putting up yard signs. And uh, I was a delegate to the state convention for the last two years, and I've been involved in the District 30 Republicans going to all of the reorgs for as long as I've been able to vote. Good for you. That's a, that's a lot, man. That is a lot of, a lot of things that you're doing at, uh, in such a short period of time and at such a young age, so uh, hats off to you. So you. Young Americans for Liberty, an organization near and dear to my heart. Uh, I go to their stuff, uh, and they have an associated uh, organization called the Hazlitt uh, mm -hmm. uh, Council, and I'm involved in that. That's for people that have been elected. So um, how has that gone when you started that chapter? Is that kind of maintained? At, it's, at colleges, it's really hard to maintain. Yeah, it's especially hard to maintain at a private university. Mm -hmm. um, university of Mary is great, you know, but I do think there is concern about organizations that may bring division. So we did have a hard time getting that established. But I continued to have meetings weekly anyway. Sure. And at the highest point, we were getting 35, 40 students there. Um, I don't great. believe that it's continuing now. I've been out of school for two years. Um, I know some of the people who are involved with me on the council are still there. But I think they've moved on to other organizations. I see. OK, well, good for you, though. That's a, that's a great. That's a great, and anything that brings to light, especially people of that age, I think so, for me as well, I mean, I only barely just started thinking or becoming aware, frankly, of politics as I got into the later aspect of college years and, and really mostly even after that. So I was a late bloomer. So when you can bring uh, awareness and, and knowledge for people, again, of that age group who, who are looking for answers, yeah. right? Yeah, and absolutely. a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of the things that conservatism offers are sort of, are sort of the answers to questions that sometimes people didn't even realize they had until they yeah. heard the answer. Yeah, and you know, young people are are idealist. Yes. You know, and they want to change the world, and so the fault of a lot of people my age is to, you know, head towards progressivism. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like a good solution, but. You know, when you really think about it and study the issues, you see that's not the case. Right. I think that the, the biggest thing for me, if I could simplify it, well, there's a couple ways I'd simplify it. You know, uh, progressivism is, is a, uh, uh, a, a policy or, or a, a, a politics of envy, and conservatism is a politics of aspiration. Um, but an, another aspect that I have to simplify is conservatism really is about the dignity of the individual. Um, it, there's no fast, easy answers, but it's the, it's the, it's the um, philosophy that truly embraces the dignity of the individual. Yeah. How, do you, are, are there any other sort of ways that you view conservatism or um, uh, liberty sort of philosophy? Yeah, I do. Uh, individual rights are a main can't, cornerstone of conservatism, but also I think families, the importance of strong families. You know, strong families, it's where people learn everything that they need to learn, whether that's education or the law or the ideals of this country. Uh, the family is very, very important. And conservatism offers private solutions against the overbearing state. And I think if you don't have strong families or strong churches or strong charities, then it makes sense why there would be a strong state. And so I think that the conservative ought to be fighting for these private organizations as well. Yeah. I agree, and, and what you what you brought up is is something that I think is under the surface for for a lot of people. They're not fully aware of it, but there really is a a culture war or a an ideo ideological war uh, between the state versus versus we'll say we'll say family. Uh, in my mind, I'm thinking family and neighbor and friends. You know, it's. Your, your culture Community, versus yeah. the state because the state comes in and they supplant. The state yeah. supplants these things and the state becomes our friends and the state becomes our neighbors and the state becomes our God. And um, I think that that is horribly um, injurious to, to who we are, to yeah. what we are as human beings. And you know, it makes perfect sense. Marxism you know, calls for the abolishment of the family and other oppressive norms, gender, sex, what have you. Yeah. You know, it's when you remove those ties that, that bring you together, that community, 
that's when you're most susceptible to state influence. Agreed. Agreed. You know, the, the family, I'm sure you probably saw, but I don't think they have it there anymore, but Black Lives Matter, the organization, they had in their website, one of their, yeah. one of their missions was to get rid of the nuclear family. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. Like the worst thing possible that could happen to African Americans, and frankly, the worst thing that could happen to anybody, regardless of yeah, their skin color. Absolutely. But yeah, blows me away. So let's, uh, let's come around to something that's uh, more uh, like rel relative to what's happening in North Dakota at this time. We have had on this show a few discussions with, regarding, uh, with regard to grassroots sort of uprising and involvement, uh, district reorganizations, dissatisfaction with the legislature, mm -hmm. and, and how it's all kind of coming together with the additional sort of awareness that generally the legislators are not taking ownership. They're not being accountable for who they are, what they have done, how they represent right. their constituents. They're not recognizing that this is a real thing, that people are not happy. So this, yeah. why don't you take us into that? Because uh, you, you were in the belly of the beast here uh, uh, just in the last few days. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, that's a great point. You know, I think a lot of the legislators would like to believe that what they're seeing at these reorganization meetings are fringe extremist groups, outsiders, you know. I was, I, I, when I was campaigning for the District 30 chair, I got a call from a few of my supporters asking me, you know, is it true that you're a libertarian? Is it true that you're a part of an alt-right organization? I'm like, no. I've been a conservative my whole life. I've mm -hmm. been a conservative. I've been involved in the Republican Party. Well. Turns out there was somebody from the other side, I don't know who, that was leaving flyers on people's doors saying that this was a libertarian takeover. Really? And so we came into the meeting, you know, a little on edge because none of us are libertarians and it just it wasn't true. We're conservative patriots. We've been loyal to the to the party, to the state, and we just wanted to see our changes and we felt like we weren't being listened to. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a way to try and um, marginalize you. Yeah. Because in 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 some ways we are very libertarian with a small L with regard to the size of and scope of government. Sure. I mean, even Reagan mm -hmm. said, in within those parameters, there's almost no difference between libertarians and conservatives. Now you can go into other areas that where there and, and certainly foreign policy where there's a difference, but they're not even they're not trying to get into the details of a philosophy. They're just trying to say they're 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 relying on a low information yeah. voter type of mentality, which means they aren't respecting their constituents. They want to throw out a bomb, throw out a bomb saying, yeah, these guys aren't Republicans, assuming that their constituents are stupid. Yeah, I mean, th these are buzzwords. Yeah. We we've seen these tactics It's before. an insult. It's an yeah. insult to their constituents. They, they, Absolutely. Just, they just don't get it. Or I I've been accused of not having agency, you know, that someone else has put me up to this. Right. You know, and I, and I think that's one of the most insulting parts about it. I've been involved in my district. I wanted to make a change. I thought I could do the job, and I got people there. Yep. Yeah, you did, and you were successful. And that's one of the reasons that I tended to be more hands-off, even when I was learning about the, the, the stuff in my district, is like, these guys have it. They're in charge. I respect them. I admire them. Yep. I admire you. Thank I you. admire everyone that's, that's taking charge. Um, and, and, um, and, and, you know, for some of the districts, it didn't work out. But, no. Um, Justice, let's, uh, let's take a break. We're going to come back with the next segment. We'll talk more about this. It's a very good conversation. Folks, stick with us. We'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. 
Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. Prairie Patriot Firearms and Training is the region's most complete gun and training center. Five lane indoor range, a gun shop, and a certified training facility. Firearms training courses are offered daily for new, intermediate, and advanced shooters. If you're not comfortable in a classroom setting, Prairie Patriot offers one-on-one -on -one private lessons. From basic self-defense training to concealed weapons testing, along with a full line of guns, ammunition, holsters, and concealment clothing. Prairie Patriot, 3930 Memorial Highway, prairiepatriot.com. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. All right, we're back. It's No Apologies on Beck, your after-hours oasis of sanity. I'm your host, Rick Becker. Our guest tonight is Justice, Amund Justice Amundsen. Um, and we've been having a great conversation, and we kind of went right into the area of something that occurred recently. Was that on, um, was that a couple nights ago? Tuesday. Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. um, the District 30 reorganization meeting where you became chairman of District 30. Congratulations again. Thank you. Um, so let's get right into the nuts and bolts because I think it's somewhat fascinating because each of the districts are different. We were talking on the break and it sounds like District 30, uh, be, let me just preface, the districts will frequently use their bylaws to their advantage. Right. It's a known thing uh, that my mm -hmm. district did, all the districts will to, to um, keep the, their preferred people in power. That's the nature of things. It's, you said your district didn't even have bylaws? My district did not have bylaws, does not have bylaws yet. And that's exactly why we were so suspicious. Yeah. You know, we went in there and there was a big commotion because they had gone through their agenda, but they didn't let us vote on it. And under Robert's rules, we have the right to vote on the agenda. We actually brought an alternative agenda with a set of rules because, once again, no bylaws, no rules. And we gave it to every person walking into the door. Whether they were here to vote for me and or that's this. yep, whether okay. they were here to vote for me or you know anyone else, and we wanted to be transparent, and we were clear from that from the beginning, and we had everybody read it, and then we just wanted a simple vote on it, and uh, they weren't letting us vote on it, and so it turned into a, a big deal. Um, some of the rules that we wanted, because I mean, keep in mind we had come into this a under accusations of being libertarians or alt right and B, noticing what had been going on in other districts. Mm -hmm. You know, some districts, the candidates weren't allowed to speak or give their pitch for why they should be elected. You know, some of the districts were dividing into precincts and we wanted the meeting to be at large because District 30D has a precedent for being at large. Mm -hmm. um, and we just, we also wanted to get rid of proxy voting. We think that if you want to vote, you should be there. Um, and, and other rules such as that, but that was available to everybody we simply asked, you know, Mr. Chairman, um, I bring forward a motion to vote on the proposed agenda. And they just 
ignored us and just kept going through with their regular scheduled business. Yeah. And we made a big fuss about it. And uh, the room was on our side. Wow. So how does that how does that work then? If they're ignoring you, how how do you force them to acknowledge you? Make a lot of noise. Okay. Um, it's it's one of those things where if you know those representing you are refusing to listen, maybe North Dakota nice doesn't work in that moment. <laughs> and you know it's not something that I wanted to happen sure. or anyone on my executive committee wanted to happen. Mm -hmm. We just wanted a vote. We wanted transparency and we wanted the rules to be established. That's all we were asking for. Um, I think that uh, we were owed that, and under Robert's rules, we had every right to vote on the agenda. Sure. Wow. Good for you. Uh, that's incredible. I'm, I'm always in favor, even if I didn't necessarily agree with, with you or the, or, or the folks supporting you, which I, which I do, but even if I didn't, I'd be in support of grassroots. If yeah. I was the, if I, you know, perhaps one day you will be the establishment. Wouldn't that be something <laughs> if establishment Republicans we're conservatives. Yeah. And you know, you, you may want to retain the conservative you know, group and, and then you yeah. may get usurped by people that are progressive that are able to overtake you. I would still be fascinated because of the importance of people, everyday citizens being active. Yeah. And you know what? In defense of the former executive committee, you know, if they really thought that this were non Republicans coming to take over it's understandable. I'm not saying it's right, but it's understandable why they would be hesitant to let us, you know, propose motions. You know, I get it. They were concerned and they wanted to protect their legislators. Maybe they thought that we were there to censure them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, in all in all fairness, I have good relationships with a lot of the people on the former executive committee. Um, Sherry Hoffert. We don't always see eye to eye, but I will say, when I was a college student at the University of Mary, she actually paid for me and four of my friends to attend the uh, state convention for mm -hmm. broke college students. And uh, in, all, in all fairness to uh, Mr. Larson, who was running the meeting, he and I had a lot of private conversations during the course of those three hours, and he was very polite. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, we didn't want to have to to hold up the meeting, but we felt that the people needed a voice, sure. and the people agreed with us. Yep. Well, and you bring up another good point, that this isn't about, this is nothing personal. No, there's no, there's no personal attacks. Yep. We don't, we don't, when I say we, I, 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 I certainly feel that I uh, have my compadres in the conservative movement and sure. this grassroots movement. Um, there's no ill will. We, no, we mean no animosity. We don't, we don't hate people, yeah. but we believe in what's best for North Dakota. Absolutely. And we believe that what is best for North Dakota is the North Dakota Republican platform. Absolutely. Which espouses liberty and personal responsibility and less spending and less taxes. Yeah. I mean, all of these amazing things. So since we are people of action and we believe fervently that this is what's best for our state, our yep. citizens, uh, of course, we're gonna, we're gonna take action. It's not Absolutely. about being friends. Yeah, and you know, I went in there and I mentioned that in my, in my speech. We did get a nominating speech. It was, it was two minutes long, mm -hmm. um, which I agreed to. Um, and I said, you know, one of the roles of the executive committee it's to support our legislators, and I think that's crucial. But we support our legislators so long as they vote like Republicans and they follow the North Dakota Republican Party platform. And we actually printed out the Republican Party platform and distributed it to people so that they knew exactly what we were talking about. Nice. We were very, very open in what we wanted to do. You know, some other things I said is that I want to have regularly scheduled state constitutional courses available to everyone in District 30. My dad uh, teaches constitutional courses, mm -hmm. and I want our legislators to be there. And I think that resonated with the room. Wow. I tell you what, if, state, if all the state legislators would go, and this is not a, a true dig at them, but I mean, everyone's busy and, and these are citizen legislators. Yeah. It's not like they're all academic uh, constitutional scholars. But I think that to every now and again reacquaint yeah. and relearn um, about the Constitution and what makes America great would be very, very good if legislators, yeah. and not just North all states absolutely and the u.s i mean wow and yeah this this wasn't a dig at all you yeah. know and i made that very clear um, another one of our proposed uh rules was that we have transparent voting we wanted independent ballot boxes to put in the front of the room where people could actually walk up with their individual ballot and put it in themselves mm -hmm. not because we think that the other side is going to cheat mm -hmm. you know I, I know a lot of these people they're relatively good people i have no problem with them but i mean you got to understand a lot 
of North Dakotans just watch presidential election where they feel that their president may have lost right. because of voter fraud. It's just smart. Transparency it's just, it's transparent. is good policy all the way around. It's nothing personal. Right. It's transparency. Yep. It's what the people deserve. Good for you. Um, well, Justice, excellent to have you on. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I, this was a good conversation. I am um, optimistic having people like you uh, involved and certainly in positions of power in the state party. So congrats again. Thank you for agreeing to be on tonight's show. Folks, we will be back. I'm going to be talking about a really interesting executive order. Man, uh, Biden versus Trump, very clear. Be right back. We're the ladies of another view, bringing you a fresh view on local issues and different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. When you're buying windows, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Hi, I'm Jesse with the Window Source. We only sell you the best windows and doors for the best price. Call the Window Source. Just because you pay less, doesn't mean you get less. If you don't know what's going on in education in this country, then you don't know what's going to happen in the future of this country. And it's important. I'm Dr. Duke. And I'm Katie. Watch the Dr. Duke Show weekdays at 4 p.m. Central Time on Beck TV. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Hero's with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow, and to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're back at segment four, and we're going to be talking about executive order. Only one of them, and there's so much to talk about. So Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Uh, put out an uh, executive order, I guess, uh, or, and or memorandum, we'll say uh, presidential action number 60, 60. And uh, this one is called the executive order on the revocation of certain presidential actions. So, oh, hold on once. Let's, let's just save that one. Take that off. We're going to come back to that, but because I want to give you the, uh, I want to give you the the foundation for this. You see, this this executive order does nothing more than eliminate several of President Trump's executive actions, executive orders, uh, and this one is a revocation of presidential actions, and they there are several. There is the revocation of core principles for regulating the United States financial system. Reducing poverty in America by promoting opportunity and economic mobility. Delegation of certain authority under the Federal Service uh, Labor Management Relations Statute. 
uh, regulatory relief to support economic recovery, reviewing funding to state and local government recipients of federal funds that are permitted during anarchy, violence, and destruction, uh, promoting beautiful federal civic architecture, that's kind of a weird one, and ensuring democratic accountability in agency rulemaking, a bunch of them. So the whole point here is we have just, boom, a laundry list of saying, you know what, we want to do away with what Trump wanted. And it is in looking at these executive orders that Trump had that Biden's executive order eliminates or rescinds that we really, I think, recognize, holy crap, Trump was doing a great job. There's so much here to agree with. Uh, I want to pull up the, the uh, first executive order of Trump that they're eliminating. It's 13772, Core Principles for Regulating the United States System. Let's pull that graphic up now. Yes, uh, this prevents taxpayer-funded bailouts. It makes regulation efficient, effective, and appropriately tailored, and it restores public accountability within federal financial regulatory agencies to rationalize the federal financial regulatory framework. Uh, it does other things, empowers Americans to make independent financial decisions, fosters economic growth and vibrant financial markets, enables American companies to be competitive with foreign firms, and advances American interest in international financial regulatory uh, meetings and negotiations. So, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, what's interesting to me is why wouldn't you want these things? Um, it's, this is what Trump did. It makes sense. Why wouldn't you want effective and efficient uh, uh, regulatory agencies? Uh, what, 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 I don't know what Biden's thinking. So here's another executive order, 13828, that we're getting rid of, reducing poverty in America by promoting opportunity and economic mobility. Uh, the purpose here. The United States and its Constitution were founded on the principles of freedom and equal opportunity for all to ensure that all Americans would be able to realize the benefits of those principles, especially during hard times. The government established programs to help families with basic unmet needs. Unfortunately, many of the programs designed to help families have instead delayed economic independence, perpetuated poverty, and weakened family bonds. I mean, Compare and contrast that to Biden's tone in all of his things where people are nothing more than victims. Trump was saying, let's get out. This isn't working. We're making things worse. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. In that executive order of Trump's, it says, since its inception, the welfare system has grown into a large bureaucracy that might be susceptible to measuring success by how many people are enrolled in a program rather than by how many have moved from poverty into financial independence. Think about Obama, for example. Remember the food stamps, how successful that was because of how many new people were brought into the food stamps program? That was success, according to Obama administration, complete failure, according to anyone who believes in human dignity and independence. Um, let's pull up the next graphic, graphic number two here. This says, the federal government's role is to clear paths to self-sufficiency, reserving public assistance programs for those who are truly in need. It must ensure that they are consistent with principles that are central to the American spirit, work, free enterprise, and safeguarding human and economic resources. For those policies or programs that are not succeeding in those respects, it is our duty to either improve or eliminate them. Do I need to repeat that? How phenomenal is that? That is what Trump stood for when people say, I don't like Trump this or that. Sure, whatever, get off Twitter, ignore it. This is what he did for America. And this amazing, wonderful thing is what Biden is getting rid of. This is, this is why I'm concerned about the direction we are headed. This is why I await on pins and needles what happens in two years. Uh, phenomenal. Continue, continuing on with this, this same executive order of Trump's, uh, they talk about balancing flexibility and accountability, both to ensure that state, local, and tribal governments may tailor their public assistance programs to the unique needs of their communities to ensure that welfare services and agencies can be held accountable for achieving outcomes. Think about that. To make sure that agencies are held accountable for achieving outcomes something that government never does, and Trump had it in there. So, um, I mean, this whole executive order of Biden's is making me more pro-Trump than I ever, ever was, I think. I don't know. Um, that same executive order, they want to reduce the size and bureaucracy 
uh, of bureaucracy and streamlined services. They reserve benefits for people with income, uh, low income and limited assets, reduce wasteful spending by consolidating federal programs that are duplicative or ineffective. Come on, people. They empower the private sector as well as local communities to develop and apply locally based solutions to poverty. Fantastic. The federal government must, must first enforce work requirements that are required by law. Duh. It must also strengthen requirements that promote obtaining and maintaining employment in order to move people to independence. <laughs> it's not about punishing people. It's about the aspiration for independence of each and every one of our fellow men. That's what it means. That is the difference between these administrations. That is the difference between these philosophies of conservatism versus progressivism. I, it can't be more plainly stated. Federal policy should allow local entities to develop and implement programs and strategies that are best for their respective communities. Policy should allow the private sector to create solutions that alleviate the need for welfare assistance, that promote personal responsibility, and reduce reliance on government intervention and resources. I mean, phenomenal. Just phenomenal. I mean, it, it goes, this, this one particular executive order of Trump's, it just, it just goes on and on and on. Requiring outcome analysis, requiring metrics that they can measure it, and requiring that agencies get the hell out of the way if they're not providing these necessary outcomes. So that's, there, there are a lot more executive orders, and we are going to hit them. I'm going to take a break here. This is a good point. Uh, we're going to come back. What other Trump executive orders is Biden rescinding? Stick around. We're going to be back for our final segment in just a minute. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, chuckle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. All right, we're
we're back. It's no apologies on Beck. We are at our final segment for the night, folks. It's been a good show. I'm alone. I'm still happy. Uh, I think that uh, tomorrow night we are going to have a uh, an encore presentation, and then next week, starting Monday, we are going to have our co-host, our lovely co-host, Lori Hinsback. Um, so let's continue on. We have uh, Biden's executive orders, which rescinds a number of Trump's executive orders. And wow, what an amazing comparison uh, of the two administrations and frankly, the two philosophies. So let's dig right in. We're looking at uh, the, the third of Trump's executive orders that Biden is rescinding. This Trump executive order is entitled the delegation of, a cert of certain authority under the Federal Service Labor Management Relations Statute. It says here, so we're talking unions, it says here where collective bargaining is incompatible with these organizations' missions, the Department of Defense should not be forced to sacrifice its national security mission and instead seek relief through third parties and administrative fora. So um, pull up the next graphic here, it goes on. The Secretary of Defense is delegated authority to issue orders excluding Department of Defense agencies or subdivisions thereof from Federal Service Labor Management Relations Statute coverage. So what that means is that they are saying, okay, when it comes to the Department of Defense, we're not gonna we're not gonna abide by these ridiculous union laws, these these regulations that say we have to um, to dig a ditch, we've got to pay someone you know 80 bucks an hour and and go through a union. So it allows for the efficiency that Trump was always uh, looking for. I think it's fantastic. Let's go to the next uh, Trump executive order. This one is 13924. He issued it in May of last year, a year ago. Regulatory relief to support economic recovery. Pull up the graphic, please. This says, executive departments and agencies under my leadership have helped them by taking hundreds of administrative actions since March, many of which provided flexibility regarding burdensome requirements that stood in the way of implementing the most effective strategies to stop the virus's spread. It continues, to aid those efforts, agencies must continue to remove barriers to the greatest engine of economic prosperity the world has ever known, the innovation, initiative, and drive of the American people. So again, this goes back to uh, COVID and wanting to uh, minimize inefficiencies and, and ma maximize um, the effectiveness and efficiency of what people are doing and able to do without government intervention. Um, Biden all along was saying government, we need government for this, 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 and this. And what we're seeing with, with these executive orders and this one as, as well, that Trump was saying, let's make it better by getting government out of the way here, 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 and here. Uh, phenomenal. This particular executive order of Trump's that Biden is rescinding also said, agencies should address this economic emergency, COVID, by rescinding, modifying, waiving, or providing exemptions from regulations and other requirements that may inhibit economic recovery, consistent with applicable law and with protection of the public health and safety, with national and homeland security, and with budgetary priorities and operational feasibility. So again, what he's acknowledging is that the best way we can deal with COVID is to allow people, to allow states, to allow local subdivisions, to uh, be free from burdensome and unnecessary regulations. Uh, that's what he did. That's what Biden is getting rid of. Again, think about it. These are great things in and of themselves, but it's flipped on its head. Biden is specifically making an executive order where he has gotten rid of these things. That same executive order of Trump's that we are now talking about with regard to COVID, it goes on to say the Department of Health and Human Services, including the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other agencies have issued or plan to issue in the future guidance on actions suggesting the stem, uh, suggested to stem the transmission uh, and spread of disease. Not adherence to guidance shall not by itself form the basis for an enforcement, enforcement by a federal agency. So what they're saying is we do have these guidelines, we do have these policies, but if you think something is better, if you're not going to follow it, it's not necessarily true that we are going to come in and try and force you. We are not going to enforce these things. We're going to be open-minded about it. It's wonderful. Uh, the government should bear the burden of proving an alleged violation of law. Absolutely. All rules, and evidence, uh, all rules of evidence and procedure should be public, clear, and effective. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Penalties should be proportionate, transparent, and imposed in adherence to consistent standards and only as authorized by law. 
Administrative enforcement should be free of improper government coercion. Amen. Liability should be imposed only for violations of statutes or duly issued regulations after notice and an opportunity to respond. That seems fair. That seems right. Agencies must be accountable for their administrative enforcement decisions. Who could, who could argue with these things? Who, who could argue? I don't know. What we have here, and I think what I'm going to do is continue on. We'll continue next week with some more of these executive orders of Trump's that, that Biden has rescinded in his single executive order. Um, because, wow, wow, do they illuminate exactly where these two administrations are, where these two philosophies are. Uh, I, I think it's fantastic to see this. Uh, I don't know how it could be more clear. When, we, when, we, you know, when I bring forth these stories to you to, to, to really shine light on what the Biden administration is doing, it is not only for the purpose of, of making you realize how bad it is for the country and, or at least having you be aware to make your own decision on whether you think it's bad for the country, but it really is to showcase what these things, what these policies, what these executive orders mean in light of a, an overall philosophy, an overall set of principles of what is best for the country, of what is best for we the people. And as we learn more and more, as we go through these executive orders, as we hold the administration accountable, we learn more and we strengthen our foundation where we can talk about these things, we can argue about these things, and we can promote change. And we are going to have to have change in the next couple of years. Justice Amundsen showed us, showed us in his very, very limited years of life on this planet that he can make change, you can make change, we can make change. Stick with us. Tomorrow night, we're going to have an encore presentation. Stick around.